What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the NJ Show. And today we've got quite a bit to talk about. Happy Sunday to everybody. I hope you're all having a great start to the new year. The first week of January has been quite intense in terms of the Bitcoin price action, in terms of the crypto market in general, the uncertainties as to whether or not the ETF is going to be approved. There's so much going on. And um, before I kick the episode off, I just want to say a big shout out to uh, to the community that's watching this recorded in the future. Let me just move my, uh, my green screen a bit here. There we go. Now, um, <clears throat> you know, I've, every time I do a live stream, I always tend to focus on the community that's here, you know, the community that's that's with us. And um, I do appreciate everybody that does tune into the live streams. But one thing I've noticed is that there is another community that's watching these videos recorded and you guys are engaging and you're interacting, you're showing love. And uh, I really appreciate that. So, you know, the last stream that we did, a lot of the audience sort of watched it recorded and, and I appreciate that. So just a quick shout out to you guys, for those who are leaving comments after the stream, for those who are getting involved, for those who are taking the content and, and using it to their advantage, you know, do apologize for a bit of the sunlight that's affecting the uh, the background, but it should be fine because we're not really going to be on camera the entire time. I hope everybody's doing well anyway. There's some good things to talk about today. This is what's crazy, you know, over the last two years, we've been discussing trading We've been discussing, um, you know, getting in and out of the market at high speeds, looking for altcoins to trade. And then within a few weeks to a few months, disrupting those trades, cutting those trades for profit. But you see, 2024 is going to be very different. 2024 is going to test you all in a very different way. 2024 will be the year where you're used to trading and the market will want you to hold. 2024 is going to be the year where you can have targets for altcoins and they'll probably outdo your targets. They'll probably go way beyond what you imagine that they could do. This is what a bull market is. In a bull market, you're never sort of prepared for what's coming and each bull market is bigger than the last one. So I'm looking at today's content and really and truly, even though we've got a few altcoins to talk about, it's still scratching the surface. There are so many altcoins to talk about. So rather than just focusing on which altcoins to talk about, I'm going to give you guys a few and I'm going to focus on the, the thought process behind how to investigate and how to look for these altcoins. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So would love to hear your FA and TA on seed if you can do that. Bro, I'll be honest with you, I'm bullish. I'm bullish on it. It's a 2.5 million market cap play. Um, you can buy it and hold it. it. It's such an easy win. You know, they've got serious partnerships and uh, I'm, I'm not an early investor of that one. I didn't buy it on the market yet. Um, if the market gives us like a steep pullback, then I'll jump in. You know, I know a lot of, uh, a lot of people in the space did invest into seed and you know, you're not, you're not going to catch everything. So it's, it's okay. But look, listen, let's kick off the show. All right. Let's kick off the show. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope everybody's doing good. So, um, what we'll do is we'll just have a quick look at Bitcoin. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but we'll just have a quick look where we left off last week. So where we left off last week, I mentioned two things. I said, look, I said, the moment we get back above this red line that we've got up here, is the moment I'd want to start paying attention to Bitcoin. It's the moment that I'd want to start looking for a long setup. Now, it's given us that opportunity. We are trading above. Is the ETF going to come? We have had news this week that suggests that by Wednesday, BlackRock at least are expecting the ETF to get approved. So let's see how that transpires. I'm still long across the market. I still think that this is going to play out. Okay, let's put one one more here. There we go. I still think this is going to play out. I still think that we're going to see 48k and we might even push up towards 50k. We'll see how the market transpires. In the interim, let's not pay so much attention to Bitcoin looking for one, two percent moves when the altcoin space is, is booming, you know? Looking at Ethereum, I'm not going to lie, with Ethereum, not really 
I'm not really absolutely enjoying this consolidation that we've got here above resistance, but I I'm not too fussed. Even though the consolidation doesn't look great, we are above resistance. We are using it as support. ETH feels good to me. And as long as it stays above 2150 and doesn't trade below it, I see no reason why we can't look, start looking at higher targets. For example, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this 2550 level, 2570 level, and it's uh, it's quite exciting looking at those levels. All right. So I can even mark that in there for you guys if you want a, uh, a target point. I think this is a good area to trim some off your ETH. All right. We'll leave that in red as well, just like we did for Bitcoin. And, um, that's kind of where I'll leave it for Ethereum. This is not really the focus of today's episode. Last quick chart we'll look at before we move on is Bitcoin dominance. I don't know if you guys remember the previous episode that I did, but I thought we were going to sweep this uh, this red line here, this trend line that we've got, sweep it, and then start pumping into the halving. But that's not what it did, guys. Look at this. Look at this. We did sweep it technically, but it's not the sweep I was thinking. I thought we'd get a full on deviation, you know, and um, but we can still do it. It's still possible. But as it currently stands, it does look like Bitcoin dominance is going once again for that 54.5% level. Now, if we do break above 55% and we start holding, I'll be very interested to see what Bitcoin does. Now, think about it logically, yeah? Over the last couple of days, we had tweets coming out saying $2 billion have been printed out of thin air, okay? Well, not necessarily out of thin air, but, you know, when you're printing crypto or when you're doing USDT, things like that can happen very quickly. We got two tweets in the last week that stated that $2 billion had been printed. Bitcoin responded to that by immediately going back to 44 k now, I'm going somewhere with this, so be be patient. BlackRock comes out and says, oh, for the ETF that we've got coming, we're going to position $2 billion for the ETF. It's, it's kind of too much of a serious coincidence, almost kind of like a sure thing. You know, we know where that two bill is coming from now. Now, let's say, for example, we are in a market where... Um, they do start implementing that 2 billion. I don't know if that's going to be great for the altcoin space. I think it might be great for Bitcoin. I think we might see Bitcoin dominance start rocketing and we could start seeing pushing it. We could start seeing it push to the higher echelons of, of the range, right? So I don't know if it could ever go as far as 63, 64%. But in my mindset, I'm thinking to myself, if BlackRock start pumping the crap out of Bitcoin and making Bitcoin steal the show, right before the halving, I can imagine that maybe some altcoins will go up in USDT, but it's it's not really going to be alt season. It's going to be Bitcoin season. It's going to be Ethereum season. So nothing to worry about right now. And overall, it's still extremely bullish. Everything that I've said so far is incredibly bullish. Let's move on. Now, when it comes to altcoins, everybody, You've got to think of it in the sense of, you know, what altcoins am I going to... Uh, let me just answer KAR's question first. Thoughts on USTT dominance? I wouldn't pay attention to that KAR, bro. The reason I wouldn't pay attention to that is because USDT is centralized. People think it's decentralized, but it's not. It's centralized. The Fed can easily make one phone call and your USDT will get frozen. So I never really pay attention to the dominance of USDT because they can, number one, print it out of thin air. Number two, they call Feds and you're done. They'll blacklist your wallets. They'll freeze your accounts, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's another episode. That's something else to talk about for another time. But that's my thoughts on it. You know, going back to what I was saying, and this is where the alpha starts coming in. So I really want everybody to pay attention, whether you're watching this live or recorded, just pay close attention to what I'm saying, because this is what I did for the last six years. And I think it's going to work again. All right. So smash a like on the video if you're enjoying the content and you're excited to learn something, and uh, obviously whether you're watching this live or recorded, let's somehow try and get to 100 likes. The moment this video gets to 100 likes, I'll get ready for the next one. Okay, cool, awesome. Now, when you're looking at altcoins, what are you betting on? What is the bet that you're making? Why 
are you insistent on deploying stable coins into altcoins? And I'll tell you the reason why. The reason why is because what draws a person into cryptocurrency is two things. Number one, it's going to be removing the bank. Being able to take money, trading that money, applying that money in a way that is pretty much 100% under your control. By removing the middleman, you have no longer any restrictions and no rules, okay? That's number one. So people see Bitcoin and they say, oh, scam because there's no bank in the middle. Oh, scam because there's no Fed in the middle. Oh, scam because there's no uh, institution behind it. And obviously because it's so volatile, it, 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 it's an unlikely asset to invest in. Lo and behold, however, when it comes to Bitcoin, it's just the introduction into crypto. Once you start looking at Bitcoin and you see it trading at 45,000, the natural inclination is to say, okay, you know what? <clears throat> you know what, NJ? You know what, Khalil? Why are carrots? IDK, Trader Mac? I've got an idea. What if, right? What if we don't invest into Bitcoin or ETH? But what if we find an altcoin that has a value proposition that can allow multipliers to be yielded, money to flow in, make similar gains to what I would have made if I bought Bitcoin at, let's say, 5K as opposed to 45K? And we can use that money to flip it into something else. Most of the time, you're going to look and say, yeah, bro, but how are you going to find those altcoins? Okay, now this is the way that I'm looking at it this year. This is the way that I'm looking at it. Every bull market, you have a set of narratives that outperform every other narrative. So watch this. This is what I want all of you to do. And that includes those who are seasoned, those who I recognize in the chat, and those who I don't. It doesn't matter whether you're, you've got some sort of network or a big influence or whatever. Whoever you are, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go on coingecko.com or coinmarketcap, whatever you feel like. I want you to go at the top of the screen, around the top, uh, where is it? Categories, right here, okay? This area right here. So you've got cryptocurrencies, highlights, chains, and categories. And what I want you to do is when you're looking at categories, you need to look for the few narratives that are going to shine significantly in 2024. You will be tested across the entirety of 2024. Every time you sell, that dip is probably going to get eaten up and it's probably going to go to new highs and the market is going to try and get you to FOMO. The objective of the market this year, the objective of the ETF is to get you to FOMO Okay, into Bitcoin, into larger assets. So there are a few... Um, narratives that I want to talk to you guys about today. And one of those narratives, well, not one of them, let me just get up my little notes here. Hold on to my notes. There we go. One of the few narratives that we need to look at is layer ones, layer ones and layer twos. And lo and behold, right at the top of the screen, you can see number two, layer one. And we're going to dig into that in a second, because I want everything to line up with my points before we go into the layer ones. Number two, and I can't see it right here, but it's going to be AI. Layer twos is right here. It's going to be AI, artificial intelligence. That is going to be the precipice of 2024. 2023 was a warm up when it came to AI. Number three, we're going to be looking at gaming. Why are we going to be looking at gaming? That's because, and Metaverse is right here. Gaming is right here, number 14. The reason we're going to be looking at gaming because gaming is a traditional way to get people involved into cryptocurrency. I know that sounds weird, but a lot of people like to detach from the real world and play games. And when you're playing a game, you have the ability to change your personality. You have the ability to change your looks. You have the ability to wear a mask and be whoever you want to be. A lot of people in the world play games. There is a lot of money flowing into games. And that's just in general, not crypto, just in general. Now, the way to utilize gaming and crypto is to look for gaming tokens and gaming projects that have the ability to maximize their cryptocurrency potential. 
bridging the gap between adoption of gaming and adoption of crypto, merging those two together, building a game that people will actually play, building a game that's actually worth some investment, building a game that is recognized by higher tier companies and, and, and bigger entities, and being able to invest in those games at very low prices. Okay, we are going to talk about some. Let me keep going on. The next one that I want to talk about is GambleFi. That's another project, another narrative that we're going to sort of jump into. Now, when it comes to GambleFi, I'm not really, you know, super, super big on GambleFi. I, 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 I look into it, I research it, but I'm not super big on GambleFi. There is one project I like in the GambleFi area. In fact, there's two or three, but we'll talk about them as we go on. The next one that we're going to talk about as well in this stream, and it will be one of the last ones, it's going to be RWAs, real world assets. I can't find it right here. It's somewhere here, but we're going to be talking about real world assets as well. And that's just a few of the narratives that we're going to discuss today, bearing in mind that we are just scratching the surface. I told you guys a year and a half ago that there will be a day that comes where when we stream, there'll be too much to talk about, okay? And that time is approaching. It's coming now. I don't know if two times a week is enough to stream, but we're going to kick it off with two times a week. And if the demand is there, if the audience is there, if the community continue to engage, if we keep getting the likes on the videos and, uh, and, and whatnot, if the Telegram channel keeps growing and such, link in the description below, it's for free, then there's going to be no reason why we can't start going live every day. All right. The demand has to be there. Now, three things I want you guys to worry about when looking at this page. Okay. Market capitalization, 24 hour volume, and the number of coins. All three of these categories within this area, I think are going to blow exponentially exponentially. There will be multiple altcoins launching to market in 2024, and it's going to be non-stop. It's going to be a roller coaster. Everything that you saw in 2021 and 2017 will officially transition into legacy coins. Coins that have had their cycles, and people are going to be flocking towards the next legacy coin. So for example, we've got maybe Solana. Guys, what is the next Solana? Well, maybe the question isn't what is the next Solana. Maybe the question you're looking for is, you know, what is the next layer one? Now, when you're looking at layer ones, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I missed out on Solana. I missed out on BNB. I missed out on Cardano and I missed out on AVAX. But maybe, maybe we can ignore the first 10. Maybe we can ignore the first and albeit I do think AVAX is going to go higher because of gaming. All right. Now, there are several projects in this ecosystem that you want to bet on. Okay. And the reason that you want to bet on them isn't because you're going to buy the layer one and then just let it do a 10x or 20x or 30x. That's not the way to look at it. The way to look at it is like this. And this is where everything changed for me three years ago. So this is the alpha. For those of you who left, unlucky. And for those of you who are staying, get your pen out because this is the alpha. Now, you look at AVAX or Cardano or Polkadot and you think to yourself, okay, I missed Polkadot at a dollar. I missed AVAX at under $10 and I missed Solana at $7. So, you know, these layer ones are so bullish. They are so insanely bullish and I missed it. But did you? That did you? What is a layer one? A layer one is the recoming of Bitcoin. A layer one is the recoming of ETH. A layer two is the continuation of a layer one. I know that doesn't make sense. Listen, listen. You bet on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is an entity that has its own blockchain. 
Bitcoin does its own thing. Vitalik comes and says, you know what? The problem with Bitcoin is that it's too slow. The transaction speeds are horrible. It's decentralized, but it can be done better. And furthermore, if Bitcoin is going to be the the the, the, the dollar of the of the cryptocurrency system, if Bitcoin is going to be the gold of the cryptocurrency system, then you know we need to expand that ecosystem. If we've got a gold of of, of the cryptocurrency ecosystem, what's the silver going to be? What's the copper going to be? What about a market that you can trade the gold with? What if you could trade gold for for materials and objects? What if there was a way to peg your Bitcoin to a, a stable currency that could allow you to then spend across multiple markets utilizing those chains? And that's what's been happening for the sort of last decade. Now, each of these layer ones have their own ecosystems. Okay, what do I mean by ecosystem? Take everything that I've just said about Bitcoin and apply it to BNB, apply it to Solana, apply it to Avalanche, Avalanche, apply it to Polkadot, apply it to Cosmos, Injective, which we're going to talk about. We're going to apply it to uh, Algorand. We're going to apply it to Phantom, to Sui, to uh, Moon River. I like that one. EOS is not a layer one. EOS a layer one now. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, the point I'm making is this. So you look at Solana as an example. You click on Solana and you see that Solana is 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 a little bit out of reach when you think about it. Let's say, for example, you're in January 2024. You're not here to make a 5X. You're, I know you guys. I know my community. You guys are not here to put $5 into a token and then it does a 10X and that's it. There's your crypto journey. I know you guys aren't interested in that. You guys want to make big gains. You guys want to throw a thousand dollars in and get a hundred X, 200 X, 800 X like Floki. You know, imagine throwing 10, 15 grand into something that goes on to do a thousand X. Imagine your life changes, isn't it? So you look at Solana and you say, well, all right, the market cap of Solana is $41.5 billion. That's okay. Cool. No worries. Here's the circulating supply. Here's the total supply. So we're not even fully diluted. You know, we're not even really fully diluted. The fully diluted valuation is 54 billion market cap. So you look at Solana and you say, all right, you know what? Yeah, I might, I might, you know, split my portfolio a little bit and I might just put some in Solana, some in ETH. And you look at your portfolio and you're saying, all right, all I need is for Solana to go to $600 and that's my 6X. Is that really what, is that really the plan? For, for 2024. That's not my plan. That's not my plan. But you look at Solana and you see $41 billion market cap. What CoinGecko is telling us here is something different to what we're actually seeing. We're not meant to be looking at that layer one. That layer one has done it. It's done it. It's done so well. What we need to be looking at is people have now bet on this ecosystem. They've bet on this ecosystem in a way that makes it makes it a top 10 token it's actually a top 5 token why do people love this ecosystem that's another episode similarly with arbitrum you know i did a video on arbitrum and the question one of the questions i was asking in that stream was why do people bet on this ecosystem why is so much money from all of us transitioning from the ethereum blockchain into these layer ones and layer twos. So you start looking and you're saying, all right, look, I can't really bet on Solana right now. It's at $54 billion market cap. Maybe you could get like a 50% sort of trade across the next couple of months and so on. But really I'm looking for a 10X, 100X. So what you do is you start looking at the Solana ecosystem because people have bet money on Solana and took Solana from zero to where it is today. So any projects that are launching on the Solana ecosystem, you'll be looking at these projects and you'll say, all right, this project that is being built, that is launching on the Solana chain, is it a project that number one, I think is going to benefit the ecosystem. Number two, I think it's going to acquire some of the volume that is trading in Solana. Number three, I think that the big players that supported Solana might support this project. Number four, let's see off the top of my head, um, is this a project that has the same longevity as Solana? You got to think of an ecosystem as your family. You know, I'm a man, right? That's how I identify. 
I am a straight man, so I want a wife, a, a straight woman. I'm looking to make that investment, man, woman. But then obviously I'm going to invest and have kids, right? Those kids, I'm going to be betting on them. My market cap has already been sort of gratified. I'm, I'm, I'll be 40 years old or 45 or 50 or whatever. My market cap is done. But you see, you wouldn't be looking to bet on me. You'd say to yourself, all right, if I'm betting on NJ, rather than betting on NJ at 40 million market cap, 40 billion market cap, why don't I bet on one of the kids? If you see one of the kids following the same path and that kid is sitting at 5 million market cap, that's what you do. You take the same process, the exact same process, and you take it, you look into the Solana ecosystem, you look into the Av Avalanche ecosystem, you look into the Polkadot ecosystem, and you look into the Atom system, injective ecosystem, and you start seeing that each layer one and layer two, they've got purposes. It's not exactly the same as Bitcoin, and it's not exactly the same as Ethereum. Each layer one has its own reason for being. For example, injective, Wizard always says it's the future of finance. It's a it's a different layer one, although it's a layer one. So it's the same principle. You utilize the same learning processes when, when you're looking at Solana or Polkadot, but it's a differently steered narrative. Make sense? Which is why it's important to be going through each of these narrow each of these ecosystems and identifying the best possible coins that you can find on the ecosystems because that's how this year is going to work. It's not going to be just oh buy one coin and I'm going to outperform everyone. It's not just going to be buy everything that's in the green. It's not just going to be buy anything that you read on Twitter. No, it's going to be focusing on different chains and seeing what the best value propositions are available on each of those chains. So we'll look at some of them today. We'll look at some of them today. Now, I mentioned a few narratives earlier on. I mentioned layer ones, and with layer ones, it's very, very easy, okay? There is one uh, Solana project that I'll talk about today. Yep, I can see it. There's one I'll talk about today, and we'll be looking at another layer two today. We're going to be looking at other coins that I'm looking at today. And let's let's do it. Let's do it right now. But everything that I explained on this coin gecko, it's so important. It's one of the best teaching things I can give you. This is kind of what I was doing. You know, in 2016, when I became obsessed with cryptocurrency, this is what I was doing. Nothing was as fancy as this. Like you couldn't go on to a website called Coin Gecko and, and click on categories. You could never do that. You know? So I'd spend all my time just investigating each ecosystem, investigating each altcoin. Well, how does, is this an altcoin that is just launching on this chain and it's just launching for the same? Is it a cash grab or is it an altcoin that's launching on this train chain with the, with the promise of in, enhancing this chain, of bringing more money into this chain, of being, bringing more trading volume into this chain? Like I said, guys, before we move on to the altcoins now, one thing I really want you to focus on is this market capitalization. This is all going to go bonkers in the next couple of months. You're looking at, you're looking at layer ones, 1 trillion, 1.3 trillion in layer ones. Don't be surprised if this doubles, triples. And if that doubles, triples in the next year, you can't even begin to imagine what's going to happen. You can't. Believe me, I've seen this twice before. And I feel like one of those preachers from Assassin's Creed, you know, you know, like standing on the wooden wooden bench, like, you won't believe it. You won't believe it. God has marked 2024 as the bull market. Even though I sound like that, I have so much conviction. All right. So, and that works the same for uh, stable coins. Look, when, when people come into the market, they're going to be looking for stable coins so they can buy more altcoins. That's going to happen. That This price is going to go up too. Um, Exchange-based tokens, this is going to go up as well because there's going to be so much trading happening within the next 12 months. Look at already what's happened in the last sort of six months. Look how much money has somehow come into the market. And now we've, we're on the sort of verge of an ETF approval. Let's see what the market gives us, right? Maybe that recession that I was talking about before, maybe it's not meant to happen right now. Maybe it's going to come at the top of this cycle. You know, bearing in mind that a recession 
if you guys don't know, the recession that we had in 2008, it kind of messed up the SPX for, for like seven years or something like that. So I can't imagine what a recession is going to do to Bitcoin, but there's no need to think about that for now. There isn't. What you guys need to think about for now is how you are going to absolutely batter the crap out of this market this year. How much USD can you pull out from this market this year? And hopefully I'm going to help you guys do that and help myself do that as well. That's that's the genuine intention and genuine hope. Everyone in the chat, everyone viewing this, it doesn't matter if we're related or not, if we know each other or not, I'm wishing you the best and I hope you make it. I know how it feels to really want to make it and it hurts, you know, it, it really, really eats you up on the inside. You want to make it so bad. For those of you who are here now, I think you all will because it's January the 7th. We've been talking about bull market for two years. Like we've been talking about it since the top of the last one. So for it to come now, this is still the early stages. The big retail flock hasn't come in yet. You know, my Floki bag was worth six figures for a, for a couple of months. And then in six weeks, it went to seven figures within six weeks. And that's, that's just because there's just so much, the, the floodgates open and you can't breathe. There's so much happening that it just, it all goes wild for three months. There's a three month window where everything just goes absolutely bonkers. And that's what we're preparing for now. So when I talk about these altcoins now, you've got to get into the mindset of buying an altcoin and you have to hold it. It's going to be so tough. So Chelsea saying, we're going to see another 15, 20% dump on high, high caps, keep reserves. Yeah, I'm more than 50% in stables, Chelsea, to be honest. Um, I'm, I am exposing myself ridiculously to this market. It is a high risk market, but the rewards, I've seen people make it before. I've seen myself do it before. It's, it's a, it's a, it's, although it's high risk, high reward, it's, it's one of those risks that I never want to look back in life and say, I didn't take the risk. I never, ever want to look back in life and say, I didn't. I want to go down with the ship or I want to become a millionaire again and um, ride it with you guys, you know? So let's talk about some altcoins. 32 minutes in. Thank you for being patient. One last thing I will say before we look at altcoins now is remember what I said a couple of minutes ago about legacy and new. When you go to a car showroom, you're not looking at that used 2014 Vauxhall Corsa. You're not looking at that. Even if you're going there to buy it and it's not a bad car, having a car is a good thing. All right. But when you get there, your eyes are going to hover. You're going to be looking at the sexiest car that's there. But the price tag is going to be a little bit, um, the price tag is going to be a little bit much. You're going to think to yourself, I can't really afford this, you know? But in itself, that's where you learn your lesson. This is what people tend to forget. The new shiny tokens, the new shiny cars, those are the ones that retail will come in to buy. They're not coming in. When that mania starts, guys and girls, they're not going to be coming in to buy a coin that's at 50 billion market cap. The retail is going to come in and they're going to be FOMOing into everything that's new, everything that's launching, everything that's taking crypto to the next level, that's revolutioning, revolutionizing crypto and transitioning it into modern day society. I promise you, this is what's happened. Um, so, you know, two coins I'm looking at that launched in 2023. In fact, three coins I'm looking at that launched in 2023 where... I am looking for potential entries. I haven't got a bag yet, but I'm looking into them. The first one is Prop Chain Global. Now, I remember 20 minutes ago, many, many, many minutes ago, eons, I spoke about RWAs. And I've been looking at my portfolio, and unfortunately, I don't really have any uh, real world assets. Real world assets is something that you're going to want to look into. Um, over the course of the next couple of months, you want to position yourself. Don't think that 2024 is going to sit and wait for you. These are the periods between now and sort of the next three, four, five months where you've got to position your bags, all right? You can't just FOMO in after 50x and say, oh, NJ told me to do it, you know? Prop Chain Global is one that I'm looking at. 
Okay, it's sitting at around 19 mil market cap when I check. I feel like I want a better entry. In fact, it's gone up. It's gone up to 20.6. So we'll see if I can get a better entry. Worst case scenario, if I need to buy a bit now, I'll buy a bit now. It is what it is. It's not going to be a play that I'm going to buy it and then in a week's time, I'm going to sell it. Definitely not. It's going to be something that I'm looking at for the longer term. But you see, with everything that we spoke about a moment ago, for the last 30 minutes, what we've been speaking about, use the same thought process. Why would I be looking at PropChain Global? What is it about RWAs that have put me into looking at PropChain Global? And I'll tell you what it is. Chainlink. Do you guys know a token called Chainlink? You ever heard of that one? When I look at Chainlink, Chainlink launched during my time. I saw it during my time. I saw it rally during my time. Now I'm looking at Chainlink and I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be worth so much in the future. Whenever I look at the market cap, I never feel like I missed out because crypto has been good to me. But Chainlink is one of those beautiful, beautiful altcoins that just went on to achieve massive, massive things. And one of the things that they're highly known for is real world assets. By betting on Chainlink, you're betting on a form of RWA. Okay? Now, Similarly, I'm looking into RWAs now, and one of the ones that have really shined out to me is PropChain Global. So, you know, looking at their website, bridging the gap between real assets and technology. Let's have a peek at it. You know, let's, let's, you know, everybody get comfortable. Everybody smash a like on the video. Please, God, we're at three likes, bruv. No, we're not. We're not. My bad. My bad. We're at 38 likes. I thought it was at three likes. I was like, right, does everybody hate the content or something? You know, <laughs> like, uh, let's do a quick shout out, quick shout out. Big up Asgard. Thank you for tuning in to the show. Big up IDK, big up Nanu, Nanhu. Uh, a big shout out to uh, Mamu. Good to see you, Mamu. Chelsea, good to see you. M Anwar, big up M Anwar with, with some serious alpha here. Don't get married to your bags. IDK is asking about A0. Bullish, bullish. That's apparently the next Solana. Maybe another video, right? Uh, Nanu says SEI, which is again, bullish. That's like another layer one, right? Or layer two, not, layer one, I think. Um, and uh, bullish, probably another video. Uh, big up to Bailey Hodgson. Big up to YR Carrots. Big up to Khalil, one of the OGs of the stream. Big shout out to Khalil. Hope you're doing well, my brother. Thank you for tuning in. Big up KAR Crypto. Big up Crypto Mac. Big up Shaq Beats. Uh, big up Ryan. Big up Miel. And every, Marta. Good to see you, Marta. Happy New Year, love. Good to see you, sis. Thank you for tuning in. Do you know who I miss? I miss Lily and I miss Liz. Ibrahim. Big up Ibrahim. Big up Outside. Oh, here the comments coming in. Big up Crypto AM. A massive shout out to Waris. And, uh, and there we go. All right, let's, let's keep going on. And QZ, QZ, big shout out to QZ as well. There we go. Um, so looking at PropChain Global, bridging the assets between real assets and technology, obviously you use different words in your mind. You know, you've tried, you're trying to dumb it down as much as you can, right? Bridging the gap between real assets, real life things and crypto. <laughs> Because crypto is essentially technology, like the, the, in it for the tech. That's crypto, isn't it? In it for crypto. In the age, oh, this is quite nice. In an age where the line between tangible and digital rim blur. No, wait, hold on. I could do that better. <clears throat> in an age where the line between tangible and digital realms blur, prop chain emerges as the beacon of innovation. We understand the intrinsic value of real world assets and recognize the transformative prowess of modern prop tech solutions. That sounds buff. That sounds quite sexy. PropChain was conceived to bridge this very, very gap by integrating blockchain trust, transparency, and efficiency, we're not only enhancing the management and transaction of RWAs, but also unlocking new avenues of accessibility, security, and growth. With PropChain, experience the future where every real asset benefits from the zenith of technological innovation. In, in, innovation. Technology, technological evolution. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I think I got like a C in English, you know. My bad, my bad. <laughs> so 
uh, from Bricks to Bytes, leading the RWA and PropTech. What I really want you guys to focus on isn't so much about the way that this is all written. What I want you guys to think is I want you to, to think from the mindset of an investor. Okay, what are the key words that I'm looking for here? Well, number one, I'm looking for RWA. You mentioned RWA, NJ. Where is RWA? Well, it's right there at the beginning. You know, when you walk into the store and you're looking for a new TV, you walk into the store, it's a big ass store. The first thing that you're going to see when you walk in with your mum and your dad who aren't going to get it for you is that TV the best TV that they've got. And it's going to be there playing some sort of demo screen. So that's what I want. When I look at the project that I'm looking to invest in, I want them to talk about it straight away. Otherwise it loses my attention. So bearing in mind, I haven't got an entry on this yet and I'm considering whether or not I should buy it, but that's the first thing I want to see. So, so far we're looking bullish. Our investigations are leading us into good places as it currently stands. Next thing I want to look at is the holders. I want to know how many holders does this project have? And here I can see 4,500 plus. This is a good thing. This is a good thing. I don't want to really buy into projects that have 100 holders or anything like that. Next thing I want to look at is the market cap, 20 million market cap. When comparing it to the likes of 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 Chainlink, the, the RWA that I, that I've used to to build my my sort of investigation, I I found an RWA project. I noticed that the narrative was big. I started investigating into the ecosystems of RWAs. I discovered Propchain Global. This is not a token that's at a billion market cap. Does it have the potential to reach $1 billion market cap? That's what we're going to try and figure out as time goes on. However, you're trying to ascertain whether or not this is a good bet within that ecosystem, within that narrative. So, so far, I'm liking what I'm seeing. All right. Now, from here, what I would do is I'd look at the DAP. I would look at the DAP. So, for example, if we uh, have they got a DAP link here? The ecosystem blockchain powered foundation amplifying value creative. Okay. Prop chain RWA and prop tech layer coming soon. H first half of 2024. Venture capital for growth. H1 of 2024. Okay. View the DAP. Let's view the DAP. So this is their product. In it for your mum. In it for the scam. Oh, we got we got we got homie in the chat. We got homie in the chat. This this guy's hurt, bruv. Chad Max 18, in it for the scam. Scammy, maybe let everyone know you've bought a big bag on it and then chill it then. I don't have a bag of this, you know. I don't, I don't have a bag. I don't have a bag of this. But um I'm sorry for whatever you're going through, bro. It sounds like you're going through something. Keep watching this scammer smokes his own homies for some money. My bro, I've been in the space for years. Like my gains have, I've, I've built a name, you know, I've made some very, very big calls in the space. You know, I don't know who you are though. It just sounds like you're sad. It sounds like you're upset, bro. And I don't know what's going on, but look, everybody in the chat, just drop a kind message for, uh, for Chad Max 18. Cause I think he's, I don't think he's doing well. And listen, uh, reach out, bro. If you're, if you're, if you're that upset and you're that sad, reach out. I'm sure there are helplines or communities that can help you out. So anyway, um, you know, I'm not even going to block you. I, I feel bad for you. I feel bad. Okay, cool. Right. Um, so, uh, actually I think I will block you actually. I think I will. Um, yeah, I know Chad is sad, man. Chad is really, really sad. I feel bad for him. Let's, let's, uh, let's hide him. Goodbye, Chad. Goodbye. Rightio. So continuing on, let's look at their dApp, right? It's live on the Ethereum mainnet where most altcoins are, are tend to be built on. And we've got our homepage. Um, you can obviously connect your wallet and that will show you the value of Prop C that you've got. Well, this is the price of Prop C. And um, <clears throat> the dApp looks clean. The dApp looks very clean. Obviously, I can't really connect my wallet here because I don't have any tokens or anything like that. But this is probably where you can stake your tokens or this is probably, or maybe this is for people that are invested in the private sale. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I didn't invest in the private sale of this, but we've got some good information here. We've got the market cap, which is which is not correct. Hmm. 
It's $20 million market cap. It's not $2 million market cap. The volume coming in at, um, what if I click on this? Okay. All right. Room, a little bit room for improvement. Really stake. Say hello to a world of limitless possibilities with our innovative staking program. I like the fact that you can stake it. That's one of the reasons I looked at it. One of the reasons I looked at it was because you can stake it. You know, one thing I like about, I quite like about PAL and I like about BRC, which is another pro, uh, project I spoke about a couple of days ago, um, was that you can stake it. You know, when you're staking coins in January 2024, you, it's difficult to go wrong, you know, especially if you've done some good research on it. What's this? Go to PropChain app. Oh, okay. So I've got to sign into this. Interesting. Invest in global real estate. Secure your financial future through fractured, fractionalized real estate. So essentially, you know, we've seen this before. We've seen people try and make this happen before. I think there was a project many, many, many years ago, I think in 2017, called Car Vertical. And I don't think that they were as fancy as these guys, but they also tried to make it so that you could buy tokens and you could use those tokens to buy fractionalized, um, you know, parts of real world, real world assets. So for example, let's say for example, um, you know, uh, Hafuel, my main man, Hafuel, good to see you, my brother, my brother Hafuel. Let's say for example, if he's not saying that to me, by the way, he's saying that to Chad, who, who we all need to, everybody drop F in the chat for Chad. Let's, let's drop an F in the comment for Chad F. I've dropped the first F. Everybody kindly drop an F in the chat for Chad. But let's say, for example, anyway, moving back to um, what we were saying, let's say, you, you know, Hafu owns a Ferrari, right? We buy all the tokens and we, we, we apply those tokens. Maybe the amount of tokens that you get and you stake, you might be able to own sort of 5% of that Ferrari. If that Ferrari is to then go up in value later down the line, you can sell that 5% or you can... Um, you can you could do whatever you want with it. Let's let's just have a moment for uh, for Chad here. Let's have a moment for Chad. A moment, a moment for Chad. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Chad is is going through a lot. He's going through a lot. Good guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. So uh, how would you compare this with NXRA, which is also an RWA? Well, I'll explain. I'll, I'll explain that. Not in the technical detail that you're looking for, but from an investor's perspective, NXRA is pumping, bruv. It's at like over 100 mil market cap now. But this one's at 20 mil market cap. Capo told me to buy NXRA at 30, 40 mil market cap. And I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. I even spoke to the team and the team, they gave me massively bullish vibes. And I think I even mentioned it on a stream and um, I didn't buy it. And now it's pumping like crazy and I've missed out. So as I was saying earlier on, anyway, I don't really have many RWAs in my portfolio, if any, and I'm looking for proper exposure. So I think PropChain could be a potential for NJ going forward. Okay. As I'm saying, as of right now, 7th of January, 2.18 p.m. in the UK, I don't have a bag. So if I do get a bag, I'll let you guys know later on. You know, Arbitrum, I traded Arbitrum from 50 cents with Mortiza to $2. I made a video on Arbitrum when it was at 50 cents or 60 cents or whatever it was, sorry. And, um, but, but that doesn't mean that, you know, I can talk about a coin and not have a bag, right? There's more to talk about as well. The other token I'll tell you guys about is Hilo. Now, um, <clears throat> Hilo is is another project that I've been looking at, and I saw I saw Sivo talk about this, and that's what initially made me look into this project. I'm liking Hilo a lot. You know, there's demand for this. It is it is a gambling project. So, <clears throat> if you know you have. If, if it's something that you guys are interested in, then then by all means, you can put money in. If not, it's something that you can at least learn about. You should still learn about narratives, whether or not you're going to be trading them or not, you know? So I remember in 2021, there was a project that did really, really well. I can't give you the exact name. I think it was called Polka Markets. And 
this polka market was a a project that launched on the Polkadot ecosystem. It launched via Polka Starter, and it was a gamified predictions platform. At the time for that bull run, it did absolutely fantastic, and there was lots of money to be made from it. All right, I'm looking at Hilo now, and I'm seeing a very very similar pattern, but obviously more modern, more up to date, more technologically uh, based is what I'd say, and um, I like it. <clears throat> Once again, I don't have a bag. I'm looking at the potential of potentially buying in because I like to buy tokens that are quite low in market cap and I like to ride them to 100, 200, 300. Maybe sometimes you get like, for example, like a play like Pal, for instance, I called Pal at 2 million market cap and I went in with over five figures, but according to Chad, I'm not doing good. You know, I then sold my pile at 50 mil market cap between 50 and 60 mil market cap. I sold, I watched it rally all the way to 200 mil market cap. And, and I'm still proud of that. I'm proud of Paul. Like that, what an amazing team. So I'm looking at Hilo as well. And I'm seeing with Hilo that they've got a very, very good dashboard. I like the speed that their website's utilizing. I like the chart. The chart looks decent and Chelsea's right. I think it is Polk. I think it is Polk or was it Polka Markets? I'm not 100% sure, but it was a couple of years ago, you know? Um, but ultimately, I'm really liking what Hilo's doing. If we have a quick peek at Hilo, let's have a look at their market cap because I... Whoopsie. There we go. Hilo. So they are currently at 16 mil market cap, but they were a lot higher, you know? They were a lot higher. I think they went to, they were, they were at like 30, 40 mil market cap at one point, you know? So Kilo is one that I think will go much higher. They've got the right people behind it. They're a strong team. They've got um, a majority of the tokens in circulation already. The, uh, the max supply isn't that much. This is another thing that I like to pay attention to as well. And, uh, Hilo might be one that I take on board as well. I'm going to wait and see how it operates. Okay. Haven't gone into it yet. Another token that I've been looking at as of today, right, is this one, Ninja. And this is on the injective ecosystem. This is the first meme coin of the injective meme, um, ecosystem. Now, I haven't bought any Ninja yet, but I really, the, the community seems to love it. Now, we had Solana and they have Bonk. We have Ethereum. Ethereum has Doge and Shiba and, 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 and Floki and, 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 and so forth, you know? Being that Injective is going to be one of the layer ones that really performs so well in this next cycle, in this cycle, not the next, this cycle. I believe it's going to perform so well. I do think that Ninja might be a buy. I saw it yesterday. It was at roughly around 19 mil market cap. And um, I haven't made a decision yet. I haven't made a decision yet. But I do think that across 2024, I think it will have that same thing that Floki had. You know, where you've got that, that window you can't, I can't tell you when it is. It's January, 2024. You've got all the way to December, 2024. I can't tell you exactly where the window is going to be, but I feel like it's going to have that window and it's going to test your patience. Holding these tokens are going to be tough, but I haven't bought any Ninja. I just think that, that this is going to do it. This is going to have, same with Grok. Like if you look at Myro right now, Myro is doing it right now. So uh, your thoughts on Katana, NJ, bro? Are, are, are your bags still filled with Katana? Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. I'm holding a nice bag of Katana Inu. That's going up. I'm so bullish on Katana Inu. I'm actually bullish for my own reasons, not even from the mindset of, of a serious, you know, entrepreneur. I like Katana Inu because it just looks so good. All the videos that they drop makes me feel like I'm 15 again. I love anime as well, you know? So all these, all the stuff that, all the content that Katana drops, it's catered to me. Like I imagine when I was a little kid, you know, if I'm going to the shop with my mum, I'm going to go and look at all the magazines and stuff. I'm not going to look at magazines of girls and stuff. I'm a little kid, bruv. I'll be looking at magazines of Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon and, and um, you know, uh, stuff like that. 
you know? So Katana, I love Katana. I'm not selling that anyway, anytime soon. I can see you shilling bite outside. I can see you shilling bite. A few people have spoken to me about Grok's AI dog bite. I know, I know, I know. I do appreciate it all. Um, and Chelsea, yes, you're right. You're very, very right. Check out Root, partnered with Reebok, Warner Bros and Ripple. Root is a very, very, very good play, but I don't fully understand their tokenomics. So I haven't, I haven't bought that up yet. Bearing in mind, guys, for those of you who have actually been here for the entire stream, I did warn you guys at the beginning of the stream that no matter how we talk about these altcoins, it's only going to be scratching the surface because there's so many altcoins to talk about. So I know everybody wants to shield their altcoins and I know that there's so many altcoins to talk about, but we're already an hour in the stream and I still have one, two, three, four, five, six more to talk about. Uh, so let's get through these six. And if we get 100 likes on this video, if we get good comments on this video, maybe some love for Chad in the comments later on, okay? Because he's going through something. He really is. Hope he's okay. We'll do the next video and we'll do more altcoins and we'll take requests from you guys and we'll do more charts, okay? Make it happen for me. I'll make it happen for you. I promise. Because Murtaza won't let me not make it happen, okay? And I know you all love Murtaza. So, that's another one. Ninja. Dog with nunchucks. Haven't bought any yet. Prop Chain Global, Hilo Token, and Dog with nunchucks. Now, before we move on, I just want to say one thing. Oh, Asgard, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. Everybody, check this out. NJ dropping some serious knowledge bombs. Now, one thing I really want to talk to you guys about, I've been waiting an hour to talk about this. Uh, Vanry, I spoke about Vanry in the last stream. Let me go back to Asgard real quick. Let me, oh, big love August. August is in the chat. Good to see you, my bro, man. It's good to see you, my bro. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Where is Asgard's comment? Because I want to, I want to, here it is right here. Okay, right. Now check this out. One thing, that people always stress about is private sales. You go onto a, a YouTube, oh, so many comments coming in now. I spoke about ammo in the last stream, my brother. Check the previous stream. I'm a, I love Amino. I think that's going so much higher than it is right now. It's a NFA, not financial advice, but it's a good buy right now. Anyway, going back to this one, I really got to get this out on the stream and I'm so gutted that it took an hour to say this, but People are always worried about private sales, okay? Everybody says, oh, do you know what? Being an early investor within cryptocurrency is nearly impossible. What do I need to do to become an early investor? Now, the thing is, when you're doing early investing, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's not as lucky as some people make out to be. There is a significant amount of research that is required to go into these pre-sales so that you know that you're not just throwing money in a in in in, in the bin you know half the time it will be like that half the time you'll say look i found a project i've invested in it it's done really well or, or, or i've invested in this project and it launched and it did shit that's just how it is but other times it does really really well now let me take you guys back to 2021. In 2021, there was two projects, okay? Two projects in 2021. Two launch pads that everything that launched on these launch pads just went crazy. Everything that launches on these ones, they, they, they do 100x, 200x, 300x. Those two launch pads were Polka Starter and Paid Network. Now, and DuckDAO as well was good. Oh, DAO Maker was amazing as well. Four, four, Four projects, four launch pads. No, wait, there was another two as well. There was another two that did really good. Either way, we are in 2024 now. I found a project, a launch pad, that everything that they're launching is just bringing in so much volume into crypto. And that project is Ape Terminal. Now, with Ape Terminal, why am I sharing this with you guys? Am I a private investor? No. Are you a private investor? No. But why am I sharing Ape Terminal with you guys? Simply because when 
Where is where's that coming from? Yo, bye. I'm just on a live stream. Let me shout you in a little bit, yeah? Love you, bro. Love. Salam. Salam. So, you don't even believe who that was. If I tell you who that was, you'd be surprised. But, why am I sharing Ape Terminal with you guys? I am getting the exact same vibes of Polka Starter and Paid Network from this Ape Terminal. Bro, I'm not shitting you. They're giving me the exact same vibes. The team are so on it. They keep finding IDOs. So I sit here at my desk and I'm researching tokens. I'm looking at different networks. I'm looking at all these new shiny projects that are launching over the next year. And I think to myself, okay, does this look good? Yes, no. Does that look good? Yes, no. Does that look good? Potentially. What's their ecosystem? How do they benefit? How much money can they bring in? How much money can they make? Is this one that's good to share with my community? Shall I tweet about this, this, that, this, that? Bro, by the time I've done all of this, these lot tweeted about it three weeks ago. And I'm sitting there with my dick in my hand thinking to myself, oh, um, okay, Ape Terminal figured it out. Follow these guys on Twitter and see what they do. I have a suspicion that when they launch their token, we'll be able to buy their token on, on the open market. We'll be able to stake the token and it will give you private sale, Brav. Look, on Polkastarter, what people used to do is they used to buy loads of Polkastarter tokens, stake those Polkastarter tokens, and they'll get private sale from staking. Do you get what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But that's what that's what I plan to do with this Ape Terminal. I'm not missing out on this. I don't care about FDV and stuff like that. Um, if I'm if I lose money on it, let it be. But if I I know that if I buy tokens and I stake these tokens for the for the 2024 bull run, 2025 early 2025 sort of euphoria, then I know that all these projects that are launching Zava, that's the one. Thanks guys. Thanks Safian and uh, Eunice. Ava launch was one of the most banging launch pads in 2021. It was. I even made a rap video on Ava launch. Ava launch round the corner. This ain't conquer. It's slaughter. Next man's launch pad. What are you talking about, bro? Tell him it's toilet water. But Ape is going to be big. Telling you right now, everything that I've seen from it, I love it. At the beginning, I was a bit concerned, you know, I was like, Ape Terminal, what's that? Hmm. But then when I looked into it, oh my God, so bullish. So bullish, so bullish. Wallah, so bullish. So I want to be in everything that Ape is in. And, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be in everything that um that Ape is in, you know, all the projects that they're launching. I'm not in every single one of them, but I'm consistently researching the ones that they're launching to try and see what do these guys see in this project? Why is this going to be a new shiny toy for the next couple of months? Why should I hodl this new shiny toy? Is it going to do well? What the multipliers are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think Ape is going to be a big player in the game. Remember that trader NJ said this We'll come back to this in six months' time, all right? Check out Ape Terminal. Follow them on Twitter. Actually, follow me on Twitter. But after you follow me, follow them. The next one is Manta Network. Now, I mean, I, I don't even know how to get private sale on this one. This one is so big. I did participate in the Manta airdrop. I got like a code or two if anybody wants. Um, but this is going to be the next one that's just going to be bonkers. I don't know where to buy this one. I think it's already trading on KuCoin at $3. I think it's going to go up. I think it's going to go crazy. Like the, the tokens that I'm getting from my Manta airdrop, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to hold them. I'm just going to hold them and see what happens. Because I remember when Uniswap did their airdrop <laughs> and then it, it, everyone got six figures. All these airdrops have been going wild. And Manta Network, powered by Celestia. You guys all know Celestia. Tia have made the biggest, um, the biggest um, sort of uh, stance in the market over the last month and a half. Everybody's knowing about Tia. Everybody's using Tia. Do you know what I mean? So um, I think watch out for Manta Network. They're going to be huge. Another one that's not on this right now, I'm not showing it, but it's uh, it's because it's because Asgard just reminded me of it, but Layer 0. Go and Google Layer 0. 
Again, that's another one. I don't even know how to get private on that. But what is the code for Ninja? What What do you mean? Like, like, what is my creed? Like, how do I live my life? Oh, I'm not a ninja, bro. I'm not. I'm not a ninja. I'm, I'm NJ, not ninja. NJ. Uh, I will get some Manta tokens too. It's trading on pre market airdrop in two or more months. You know what, August? I thought the airdrop was actually next month. I thought Manta was this month and next month. I'm not 100 percent sure, but um. I think it's next month, you know, August. Double check, double check. But um, damn, I know layer zero for almost a year. How do I get it? I don't know. I, I, I genuinely don't know. I don't have all the answers. Check the Inge ecosystem for Ninja. Yeah, Chelsea. Oh, the ticker. The ticker. Sorry, Kelvin. I'm very sorry about that, my bro. I thought you was asking me like a madness. <laughs> I answered it. I was like, yeah, you know what? I can't really talk about my creed like that here. Like, I'm not a ninja, bro. I'm NJ. But um, just go on CoinGecko, type in ninja, and you should get everything you need. Good work, Kelvin. Good question. Um, so yeah, watch out for Manta Network. It's going to be big. Um, for those of you who have bridged ETH over to the Manta Network, you can, uh, you'll get stoned for that. So I've just staked all my stone. I bridged something like 10 ETH or something like that over. And I just, uh, I, I got stone for that. And I just staked all my stone. And I'm probably going to hold the Manta tokens as well, just to see what it does. We'll see what happens. We'll see what it does. You know, the next one, this is one that I've invested in three years ago. It's uh, called Ruby Protocol. Now, Ruby Protocol is, um, it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be an interesting one. This is one that I took very, very big interest in last or three years ago. It was 2021. You know, I took big interest in this one. And I'm interested to see how they do. My understanding of Ruby Protocol is that they are a, um, they're a private data manager. So, for example, you know, you've got a communication and interactions between multi-chain you know, that's what everybody wants, interoperability. And they add a privacy layer in between that, you know. So I can see a use case where Ruby protocol will be used a lot. And this is one that I'm an early investor in. I'm interested to see what they do. I believe that they're launching, in fact, in a few days. I believe that they're launching on January, I think tomorrow or the 12th. I'm not 100% sure. It's on their Twitter. Give them a follow. You don't have to buy anything, but just learn. The more of this stuff that you learn, I tell Crypto Mac and Crypto AM this all the time. Just because you're not buying something doesn't mean you can't learn about it. Learn as much as you can. It will make sense later on, you know? So this is one that I'm 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 invested in. This is one that's launching soon. And this is one that I'm expecting to hopefully do well across the course of 2024. The friendliest wallet to manage your crypto, the most private way to send and receive. It's going to be like MetaMask. It's going to be like MetaMask. But, you know, everyone's moving away from MetaMask. Everybody's moving to Phantom now. Um, Trust Wallet as well is becoming a little bit old now. You know, in 2017, that was the year of the big wallets, you know, like we had BQX, Ethos, you know then metamask and trust came in and just obliterated that and i think ruby is going to do something similar as well i've seen quite a number of uh, of wallets launching across the course of 2023 not a lot of them have picked up steam but i like the fact that ruby has been working quite relentlessly over the last 3 years and the better part of 2022 to make this product happen their website has a lot of information here you can learn a lot about the team here and who have sort of um, who's gotten on board, you know, X Harvard, X Beam, X Credit Suisse, X NASDAQ. You can see that there's a good set of backers behind Ruby as well. Um, a good set of ventures. Not all the ventures are there. There's a few as well that are should be there that I can't see right now. But, you know, we can go to their Twitter, have a look, followed by me, followed by Init for the Tech as well now. And, um, announcing the Ruby token launch. The token launch officially starts on the 8th of January. So that does not mean trading, does it? We will see. We will see. But Ruby, 
that's one that I'm in. It looks like a shiny new toy. We'll see what the market allows it to do in the next couple of days. All right. Next one on my list, which you guys might have seen is Easy. I like the name, you know, I like the name Easy. Now, Easy, again, I think it's more GambleFi. Okay. You're looking at kind of like the recoming of maybe RLB, I'd say. Maybe not quite like RLB. It's not quite like, but I do think that it does fall into that category. Now, as it currently stands, I, I'm really liking Easy. I'm, I'm really, really liking them. I'm bullish on them. RWA, NFTs. Um, the, the website is smooth. It's still in testnet, so I'm not going to be blasting through the website and showing you flaws, but I'm bullish on Easy. I have invested in Easy quite recently. Didn't at the beginning saw the 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 value proposition that they have and and I said yeah do you know what I've got to get I've got to get in on this one very very pleased to be an early investor and um I'm very very keen to see what they do going into 2024 again I'm looking at shiny new toys ones to keep an eye on ones to watch you know and I'm going to compound on the way that I look at shiny new toys by investing in the right launch pads that are working with similar projects such as easy okay Check this one out, easy.io. You can follow them on Twitter as well. Very, very easy to do. Um, I miss owning pudgy penguins. I used to have pudgy penguins in uh, how to grow a small trading account. <sighs> All right. Okay. So easy. One to watch out for. One to watch out for. Uh, next one to keep an eye on is Mixmob. Whoa. Mixmob. Racing game. Game five. Why am I so bullish on game five going into 2024, going into the latter stages of 2024? Is, whoa, did you see that? Is because games have evolved, man. Games are evolving in the crypto space. It really isn't going to be long before we start seeing these big, whoa. It's making my camera glitch. That's so cool. You know, it's one of those things where it's not going to be long until we start getting PlayStation and Nintendo and, and PC. PC gaming and crypto has already merged. You know, it's not going to be long until we see, you know, I've got a Nintendo Switch in the background. I've got a PS5 in the background. I've got a, um, you know, Mac, what else have we got, bro? What else have we got? I don't know. But the point I'm making is it just, it's not going to be long until we see um, gaming fuse from crypto to these devices. And when that happens, I'm not going to lie, man. It's just, it's, it's not going to give you time to get on board. It's not. Think about it from the concept of RuneScape. When I was young, my dad used to beat me up all the time, bruv. I used to spend way too much time on my computer, you know? I'd sit here on Habbo Hotel and RuneScape, my eyes would be like this. And I'd just be going and going and going. I'd be farming lobsters and, and doing the bows and going into the wilderness with a poison dagger and just attacking man relentlessly. And I always thought to myself, you know, like I used to go to school when I was in, when I was at 11 or 12, I used to go to school and I would sell my coins to people at school for, for 10 pounds or 20 pounds. Do, do you know what I mean? And I thought to myself, whoa, if, if I was a 10 year old or 11 year old or 12 year old, and I'm thinking like this, where I can go to school, sell my RuneScape coins for real life money, what's going to happen when crypto starts doing this? Now with Mixmob, I think that they are taking racing games to the next level. It's a project that is on the Solana ecosystem. When I see good graphics, I just tend to get horny. That's the truth. I apologize for the uh, for the lack of professionalism there. But when I hear good sound and when I see good visuals, I just get horny. Every year I look into the best TVs. I look into the best monitors. I'm investigating the best camera that I can get as well now. I love audio and video. For those of you who know about the Dajjal, you'll know what I'm talking about. Audio and video is, is what what this generation is is really pushing towards and we we appreciate beauty you know so katana inu mix mob i love what they're doing i think people are going to use this i think that they're launching on the right chains well katana's on eth but this one is on solana i think that it's gonna do well so check out mix mob it's another ape terminal special i quite like this marvel sort of look that they've got here as well with the comics and the the design 
and um the the co-founder of of mix mob i believe is previously from blue Zell. so for those of you who know about blz from the 2017 to 2021 era blue Zell was a successful project and I, it was on binance you know it was serious so seeing him move over to mix mob just bullish bullish as soon as ape terminal talks about it as soon as i see these little little bits and bobs gluing the puzzle together instantly i become bullish i'm a proud investor of mix mob and uh really excited to see what they're going to do and asgard here who has become like my favorite guy today he's saying blz was dope and it was there was some really good trades to be taken from blz uh nj bro what do you think of uh liquid staking on sei sei is good man sei is good look don't don't abuse your portfolio yeah don't abuse it don't just buy things because everything looks bullish like take your time take your time look for like for example like mix mob yeah if mix mob launches and and the market's a little bit red or something like that and you get a good entry bro that's what i'd be looking at not financial advice but i'm just saying look for low entries for projects that can benefit ecosystems and communities and and telegram members and stuff like that look for things that people are going to buy and volume is going to come in on don't just buy anything you know but big up sei they're a good project i've spoken to the team in the past in the summer i spoke to the team i really like what they're doing they're a binance project so say less and um i think there will be some good projects launching on that ecosystem as well nj i love the content would really appreciate if you could do a show or discuss how someone with 10 20k can narrow down on projects i feel like i have too many coins but there are all solid projects alec what i will say is that you're going to make it if you've got that much now when you're you're investigating like this at this stage of the market you're going to make it um so gg gg and um i would say don't buy everything everything is going to go up everybody's a genius look i'm trader nj i've come on this show i'm like bro i called paul and i called this and i was there for that and i was there for that but then you go onto some other person's youtube channel and they'll be saying the same thing but in it with different coins everything is going up everything it's just about the projects that you believe are going to produce the best multipliers. Anyway, look, I'll change the screen now because I think it's annoying a lot of people and, and, and there's a lot of flashing images. The final one that I'll talk about before I shoot off is Lens. Lens is one that I very, very, very recently invested in. Love the CEO. Bullish on how professional he is and how he's conducting everything. Loans backed by everyone. Everyone. B, look, you'll see it here on the website. BTC, ETH, so every every layer one project that you can think of backed. I'm very very bullish on Lens. It's another Ape Terminal special. Keep an eye on Lens. I don't know when they're going to be launching to market. I think they might launch this month. I'm not sure, but I'm bullish on Lens. I don't really care when they launch. I'm bullish. I'm I'm happy that I'm an investor. And I think they're going to go on to do really big things. So let's see what they do. All of these projects that I mentioned as of today, remember the, the precipice behind why I've mentioned them. When retail comes in, they're going to be looking at the new shiny toys. That's what they're going to be looking at. The new shiny toys. Keep that in mind. If there's anything that you can take from today's lesson, then take that. Look at the categories Within those categories, find your favorite altcoins. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Let's go to gaming. At the top is ICP, which has been doing absolutely phenomenally. Rather than FOMOing into ICP at $5 billion market cap, why can't you just look at another project that you think could beat ICP or could compete with ITC, ICP? You know, for example, I look at Waris here it's talking about a bunch of projects. Um, I love all of them. I love all of them. Inspect, bullish. Vanry, bullish. Propsy, I haven't got a bag yet, but I'm investigating. Shrapnel, I haven't got a bag, but I've seen some of the gameplay. Amazing. Uh, Amino, I love it. So bullish. And Katana Inu, again, that's a good example. Katana, you look at ICP, you see the market cap of $5.5 billion, $5 billion. And then you look at Katana Inu. Wait. You look at Katana Inu and Katana Inu is sitting at, at 30 mil or 55 mil market cap. It's kind of like, you know, do, do you know what I mean? 100x away from ICP's price. 
it just goes to show you like the difference. So, so bet on something that you think can catch up and compete. It's kind of like when you're watching football, right? I don't know if anybody watches football, but I'm a huge Man United supporter. And, you know, say for example, you have got a PYR, again, PYR, bullish, bullish on PYR. I don't hold a bag, but bullish. Crypto AM's got a bag of that. Bullish, bullish. It's like football. Um, you know, when you're, you're playing football and you've got, you've got a team, let's say for example, you know, you've got your right winger or you've got your striker. You don't want to have Mbappe and, 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 and some, some other dude on the team. That's not the same. You want to have two strikers on the team that can compete with each other that are so good. And they're so in sync with the team that they're fighting to start the next game. Do you see what I'm saying? So, um, similarly like this i don't want to be betting on mbappe like mbappe's already proven that he's just better than everybody else i'd rather bet on on hoyland which which i think is katana inu all right someone who's young someone who's got room to grow it's 100x before you even catch up to icp let alone overtake do you know what i'm saying so even if it does half of what icp did i'm not worried at all thoughts on wombat wombat amazing it looks really good i'm not in that i think capo capo shared that one and i saw some stuff from capo's profile from it very 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 good um nj is on fire today thank you as god it's been a conversation and a half today i am so sorry for bombarding everyone with so much information today but crypto <coughs> is becoming so busy again i can't believe how busy cryptos becoming it's been a long time since I've felt this way where I just can't keep up. I just feel really, really tired. And the irony is that like, we need to stream more. The, the way to calm down, the way to not be overwhelmed is we need to stream more. So to end the video, what I will ask from the community is a few things. I need your help. TraderNJ1 on Twitter, please go ahead and follow, become part of that community. The link in the description below, the first link in the description is a link to the free telegram of In It For The Tech where you will meet the lovely Murtaza. Murtaza, for those of you who know him, Wallah, he's a gift from Allah. He's he's a gift. I'm so happy and pleased to call him my brother. I've watched him grow up. Like I've watched him grow from, from being sort of early in the space to a proper man, proper entrepreneur. You'll meet him and you'll love him. So check out the In It For The Tech Telegram channel, which is for free. And lastly, if you've stuck around for this long, then please smash a like on the video. Let's get past a hundred likes. Please drop a comment on the, the stream if you're watching this recorded. And as soon as we get over a hundred likes, we'll go live again. All right. I love you guys. I'll see you guys during the week. Thank you for tuning in on your Sunday. I hope you have a lovely and peaceful evening to your weekend. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of the NJ Show. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.